What is going on everyone, Wally here with another lore video and in today's lore video we're going to be discussing the Vault of Glass and a little bit about the Vect. But I want to let you guys know ahead of time this video delves a little bit deeper into speculation since the information around the Vault of Glass is surrounded in Greek mythos and has a lot to do with time and honestly it's a very confusing subject. So I'll try to lay it out as best as possible so stick with me through this as we go through the Vault of Glass and hopefully uncover its mysteries together. So to delve deeper, we have to look at what the Vex, or who the Vex are to better explain the Vault of Glass. Now, this comes directly from the card, but the Vex are architects of ancient and complex structures thought to be buried within every celestial body, linked by a network unlike any on Earth. They operate in unison, directed by a single unfathomable purpose. Now, what this purpose is, we do not know. There's a lot of speculation about this, and my videos really don't delve too much into speculation, but this one, I feel, will delve a lot more into speculation. So to better summarize it and to better get into it, we'll explain the Vault of Glass and the implications of it. So the Vault of Glass is on Venus. It's been found by the Ishtar Collective. They knew it was there prior to the collapse, or what we assume to be prior to the collapse. And the question is, is what are the Vex doing within the Vault of Glass, or why is it there? Now, what is in the Vault of Glass and its occupants, we are going to explain that here. But what we assume the Vault of Glass to be is a realm outside of time and space where the Vex have figured out a way to kind of conform reality to their own will. They are limited in this respect, and it has been briefly noted in some of the cards that they have not been able to carry this kind of power outside of the vault but they are very very powerful within the vault it seems to be a realm in which they control the very synapses of reality what we understand to be the laws of physics they control much of these things so we're going to delve deeper and hopefully explain how they control these things and potentially why they're doing this now we need to start with the first enemy that we encounter an axis mind the templar is extraordinary he is an individual a creature out of time with impossible capabilities. Now the Templar and the oracles that guard the way deeper in the vault legends say that the oracles foresee what is to come, a world as the Vex desire it. And the Templar has the power to shape reality to match the oracles designs, expunging any threats. So the oracles as we understand it go back to Greek mythology. They go back even further to Egyptian mythology, but essentially what the oracles are, they are fortune tellers. They foresee the future. Now, it's not the briefest way or the best way to describe it, and that's a pretty harsh generalization in my opinion, but it is the best way to say it. The oracles of the Vex, at least, are beings of immense power that have the ability to transfer the reality within the Vault of Glass to become the actual reality. They themselves can't do it. They're only fortune tellers. They have to transfer that power or at least that thought process or that version of their reality to the Templar. And the Templar has the ability to transfer to make that reality a real thing, a real concurrent path, ultimately eliminating Guardians if they do not eliminate the Oracles when they first encounter them. So to sum it up briefly, to, to start where we first began, the Vault of Glass is an area that is without time and space. It's in its own realm. It's in its own realm of reality. It doesn't exist on our plane because it potentially couldn't due to our laws of physics and the nature of which we'd understand things. We can't will things out of existence. We can't predict the future. There's so many actions and reactions that make this almost impossible in our present day system and especially in the present day reality of destiny. But what it does mean is that the Vex have created something, or they've been gifted something, that is insurmountable in power. So scary and so frightening that it has the ability to simply change the course of history and, of course, the future. The great thing, though, is that this only exists in one realm, which is the Vault of Glass. Now, the second thing we'll run into is the Gorgons. Now, the Gorgons, if anyone understands Greek mythology, will understand and immediately correlate them to Medusa, and her two sisters. But it goes back further than that, of course. The Gorgons are depicted in many different areas as simply serpents with powerful gazes that have the ability to turn anyone to stone. Now, in the Destiny realm, it goes deeper than that. The Gorgons are something more, something much more, and something equally terrifying. 
Now, in the Destiny Realm and in the Vault of Glass, the Gorgons have the ability to essentially will you out of existence. Now, that's terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying to just make you not exist. But since the Vault of Glass is, again, a realm of Vex creation or potential a realm of Vex control where they define the laws of the universe, they can do this. Now, the study is called Ontology, which basically is the philosophical study of conceptions of being, becoming, existence, or reality, as well as the basic categories and beings and their relations. So from the Vault of Glass card, from the Grimori card, it says, Deep in the Vault of Glass, the fabric of reality bends to the will of the Vex. Orlok speaking in tones of awe of the Gorgons, creatures that seem to possess dreaded and almost unimaginable strength, an ontological weapon. Like the Oracles and the Templar, the Gorgons reputedly possess the ability to define what is and is not real. Whatever they perceive becomes subject to erasure at their will. Until a countermeasure can be found, guardians must avoid their gaze at all costs or to reply to any detection with immediate overwhelming force. Now, contrary to popular belief, these Gorgons are actually killable. However, when they are defeated, they become stronger. So that is something that any guardian willing to undertake the challenge of the Vault of Glass must be well aware of. Continuing, the Gorgon's ability must be tied to the nature of the Vault of Glass. We can take some solace in the fact that the Vex cannot manifest this power in the world outside. So what does that mean? Basically means that the Vex's power is limited only to the Vault of Glass. We see their most fearsome, or at least their most current fearsome creations and creatures here. Only in the realm of Vault of Glass where they have control over some of the laws of reality or the laws of that realm of the universe. Now, it's very, very terrifying, and hopefully we can explain why this is happening or at least why they're attempting to do this when we discuss Atheon next. Now, the best way to discuss Atheon is to take a look at the facts we are presented with. This one comes directly from the Gomori. To speak of Atheon is to accept certain limitations. We are ill-equipped to understand an entity that defies simple causality. Let us accept these limitations and proceed. Atheon waits in the Vault of Glass, just as Atheon sidesteps past and future. It is impossible to say whether Atheon created the Vault or the Vault created Atheon. Casual pathways converge on Atheon from every access in the space-time bulk. Atheon has a function. We hazard that it regulates and oversees the Vex Conflux system. What are these confluxes? How do they relate to the physical Vex network that has devoured so much of Mercury and Venus? We might guess that the Vex confluxes represent the extension of these networks across space and time. Perhaps the Vex use closed timelike curves to solve unfathomable computations. Or the Vex may seek to transcend physical substrate and move their thoughts directly into the fundament of the universe. Now this portion of the card basically explains a good portion or potentially explains what the Vex are doing within the Vault of Glass. If physics is a set of rules that the cosmos uses to calculate itself, perhaps the Vex seek to worm their way into these calculations, to become a law of reality, inseparable from existence, a virus in the system. Perhaps Atheon was the centerpiece of this project, a command nexus that unified efforts across time. Now, at the end of the card, it basically says that this is speculation because a majority of this is, again, speculation. Now, we can, of course, derive from Greek mythology that Atheon was potentially the Greek god of famine, but he was also the horse of Helios. So what does that mean? Well, it means potentially that Atheon is a minor character. He is not the end-all, be-all example of what the Vex have to offer, and he could potentially be carrying more dismay and distraught to us. So... What does that mean? Well, I'm going to go ahead and delve into the speculation portion of this video a little bit more in depth here. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this is just my theories behind what the Vault of Glass is. Normally, never really do this. I I like to delve most of this in fact. But if I'm going to say anything, it's that the Vault of Glass is a test realm for the Vex. They're testing what they can do. If they want to transcend existence, the best way to do that is to become law. And that's exactly what's said in the Atheon card. They're attempting to become part of the laws of the universe and the best way to do that is to control time past present and future but the way we understand it is that the vex ruins on venus have predated humanity by about a billion years now this isn't conjecture this is from the game itself and from the lore as we understand it however the question is is if they predated humanity for such a long period of time why haven't they destroyed humanity prior 
Well, potentially they can't do that. Potentially humanity has a much larger role to play, perhaps in their creation or perhaps in the ultimate design of the Vex. What we do understand from the Vex is that they are incredibly intelligent. They are hyper intelligent, if you will. They are a machine race of biological potential origins, but they are a machine biological mix. They are a race of individuals that are like humanity as described in the Ghost Fragment cards of the Vex. That has terrible implications. They think like us on a better level, on a faster level, on a more advanced level, of course, but they are undoubtedly like humans, constantly cross-referencing things, running models, running speculation, thinking about what if and what could happen. They're doing it on a grander scale by actually controlling time. They're not running models anymore. They're actually going back and forth in time to potentially create things that we don't understand. But to better understand the Vex, we're going to have to explain them in my next report which will delve deeper into the Vex, their natures, and potentially what they plan to do to us.